join us in worship through this live stream at the diocesan shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Friday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time. The Church celebrates today the memorial of St. Jerome, priest and doctor of the Church. Our Mass presider today is Rev. Father Benigno Beltran, SVD. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to the most sacred heart of Jesus will now begin. Please rise. Come, let us sing, let us praise the Lord, and gather in His altar to worship His name. Come, let us pray, let us open our hearts to receive His blessings and to kneel down and thank him for all that he's done for all of the blessings in our lives come let us sing let us praise the lord and gather in his altar to worship his name come let us pray let us open our In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Jerome, priest and doctor of the church, translated the Latin Vulgate from original languages. So he is called the doctor of the church for his insights into the truths of sacred scripture. Before we continue our celebration, let's acknowledge our sins so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the divine word who became a human being to show us the way to the Father, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, through Holy Scriptures, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through the Most Holy Eucharist, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest, St. Jerome, a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that you people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find in it the fount of life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place for taking hold the ends of the earth till the wicked are shaken from its surface? The earth is changed as is clay by the seal, and died as though it were a garment. But from the wicked the light is withheld, and the arm of pride is shattered. Have you entered into the sources of the sea, or walked about in the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of death been shown to you, or have you seen the gates of darkness? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? 
Tell me, if you know all, which is the way to the dwelling place of light? And where is the abode of darkness, that you may take them to their boundaries and set them on their homeward paths? You know, because you were born before them, and the number of your years is great. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am of little account. What can I answer you? I put my hand over my mouth. Though I have spoken once, I will not do so again. Though twice, I will do so no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed me my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. We honor the Holy Gospel. Spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But will it be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you? And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the nether world. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Good evening. May God's blessings be poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit as you join us all, as we join in celebrating the Word of God and the Most Holy Eucharist. Already in grade school, we are taught about Aesop's fables. One of them, relevant to the gospel today, is the fable about the fox and the grape. So there was a fox, according to Aesop, wanted to eat grapes. He saw a bunch of grapes, very inviting. He jumped. Of course, he could not climb. He jumped and jumped. He got tired. After some time, he said, it's okay. Those grapes were sour. Yung kinukonsole na lang niya yung sa kanya sarili dahil hindi niya makuha. So, defense mechanism ang tawag dyan sa psychology. Niloko ka. Napagbilhan ka ng kotse na akala mo na pagaganda. Tinesting naman. Pagkatapos, dalawang linggo lang. Kakarag-karag na. So, ayaw mong mapahiya. Nadinggoy ka eh. Sasabihin mo, di bali, maganda naman yung kulay niya. Sweet lemon naman ang tawag siya. Yung kay Aesop, sour grapes. Yung itong bago ngayon, sweet lemon. Na ang asim niyan. Pero sasabihin mo, matamis pa rin. Ganda pa rin yung kotse dahil yung kulay niya, terno doon sa mga kortina ko. Kung ano-ano na lang ating pinagagawa para hindi natin harapin yung katotohanan. Tigas ang puso natin. So ang daming sinasabi dyan sa psychology. Pinag-aralan ko yan, nagturo ako ng psychology. Mysterio yan. Even science cannot explain fully the hardness of our hearts. Hindi ka spell today. Corazin, Bethsaida. So the miracles of our Lord. The blind see, the lame walk, even the dead are raised. Did you believe? No. He said, go away from us. We do not want to hear. They rejected him. Whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. So, we create God into our own image and likeness. Yung, hindi yung powerful God calling us to repent. So, gusto natin yung Diyos na nakokontrol natin. Nubina-nubina ka lang ng kaunti, bibigay na yung gusto mo. So, even the Bible, we we impose our own meaning on the Bible so that we will be comfortable. Since wrong. So, that people from wrong translations even, were imposing their own meaning on Holy Scriptures. So he spent his life studying Hebrew and Greek so that he could make a Latin translation from the original. To lessen our capacity to impose our own truth so that we will not be able to face the real truth. Sour grapes, sweet lemon. Repression, yung tawag sa psychology dyan. We refuse to face the truth. The truth is, kung mag-drugs ka, wala kang ibang pupuntahan dyan, kundi kulungan, ospital, rehab siguro, cemetery. Yan lang pupuntahan mo. Marami pa rin hindi naniniwala dyan. Dami pa rin drug addicts ngayon. Kahit pinagbabaril na yung mga ilang users, nakalusot naman yung mga talagang tunay na drug lords, tuloy pa rin ngayon. 
tinatakasan natin ang katotohanan kagaya ng Kurazim at saka ng Bethsaida. At walang ibang makapagbago sa ating puso. Hindi psychology. Alam ko yung cognitive, behavioral, therapy, yun ang bago ngayon. Noon si Sigmund Freud, na ego, super ego yan. May id, na sex and aggression lang yan. Ang daming mga taong nagpa-therapy na ganun ng panana. Hindi pa rin nila hinarap yung katotohanan. Halimbawa, yung si Luther. Si Luther imposed his own beliefs. So marami, 300 million yung mga sumunod sa pag-alis nila sa simbahan. Karamihan sa kanila, hindi naniniwala sa Santa Papa, hindi naniniwala sa mahal na birhen, lalong-lalo na sa Holy Eucharist. Wala ayan silang misa. Tingnan mo yung kanila, masaya naman yung kanilang music-music, mas magaling naman minsan yung kanilang mga pastor, mag pumili sa mga paring katoliko, ang daming sumusunod doon. Pero, yung isang libo, limang daang taon ng pinaniwalaan ng mga Kristiyano, tinanggal nila hanggang ngayon. May iba din, nagtatayo na lang ng mga sekta na kanila. Hindi mo alam kung anong version ng Bible yung kanilang ginagamit. May napakalaking sekta, milyon ng mga kasa- kasapi. God, Jesus is not God. Tao lang daw si Jesus. Sabihan mo, kung tao yan, walang hanggan na ating pagkakasala dahil walang hanggang Diyos yan, hindi tayo maliligtas yan. Sweet, sweet lemon, sour grapes. Kahit sasabihin mo, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.14 And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Si Jesus yun. Si Jesus, divine Word yan. Kaisa sa pagkadyos ng Ama yan. Wala. Tao pa rin si Jesus. Philippians 2. Jesus did not cling to His being God, but emptied Himself and took the form of His slave. Anong sinabi ng Philippians? At the name of Jesus... Every knee should bend above the earth, the earth below the earth. In His name, because He is God. Wala pa rin kung ano-anong mga palusot ang ginagamit. So today, let us examine our own hearts. Kasi, Lagi nating binubulag ang ating sarili. Kahit mga pare, noon kahit mga santo papa, binubulag ang kanilang sarili, nagsasour grapes, nagsisweet lemon. Nagnanakaw ng pera ng iba, sasabihin, para naman sa pamilya ko ito, hindi naman ako mahuhuli, Ginaga, ginagawa rin naman ng iba. Bakit? Ang dami-dami nating we are geniuses, at giving reasons of why we should not face the truth. So we already have scriptures. The Spirit of St. Jerome. But because of the mystery of the blindness of the human being, we could not really explain bakit may asawa ka na may ibang pamilya ka pa. Tanungin nyo nga kung bakit yung ginagawa. Marami yan. Dito lang sa atin, sa culture natin, may kirida. May tunay na asawa, may kirida sa John. Binabahay niya sa ibang mga kondominium. Why? Do we hide it? Why do we persist in doing it? In the parable of Lazarus. Andan din yung blindness eh. Lazarus and the, bla, and the rich man. Sabi ng rich man, pabalikin ninyo, Father Abraham, si Lazarus, namatay na yan, mabuhay na mag-uli yan, tapos sasabihin na ganito ang katotohanan. Sabi ni Abraham, ah, 
Diyan na sa kanila si Moses ang mga propeta, nakasulat na sa Bible yan. Sabi nung mayaman na nasa impirno, naghihirap. Oh pero amang Abraham, if somebody rises from the dead, baka maniwala ay yung may lima pa akong kapatid eh. Abraham said, if they do not believe in Moses and the prophets, and what they wrote in Holy Scriptures, they will not believe, even if somebody rose from the dead. Actually, somebody already rose from the dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Still, many people find a reason not to believe in Him. And also, many people who believe in Him find ways so that could not they could not face the challenges. Kaya Santo Nino, maraming nagaanod. Pero yung Santo Nino nga, lagi kong sinasabi, lumaki yan eh. Nanghahagupit yan eh, ng mga tao doon sa templo eh. Sinasabing huwag niyong gawing tahanan ng mga magnanakaw, itong tahanan ng aking ama. You have made it into a den of thieves because of your blindness. So let us pray to the most holy God, one in being with the Father, who became a human being, light from light, true God from true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the divine word made flesh. Na sana tanggalin niya ang katigasan ng ating puso that He will remove the blindness in our hearts so that we can face the truth about who we are, about what our destiny is, and why the divine world had to become a human being to save us from our sins. Prayers of the faith. My sisters and brothers, let us pray for everyone, for all men, women, young people and children, that their blindness and hardness of heart will be taken away so that they will obey Christ and respond to the call for conversion and renewal. Let our response be, Lord, open our hearts. That the church may be instrumental in bringing people back to the fold and in preparing them so they could enter God's kingdom. We pray, Lord, open our hearts. That leaders of nations may join hands in bringing freedom and dignity to all. We pray, Lord, open our hearts, that we may be renewed from day to day through faith in the Word of God, calling us to a better life. We pray, Lord, open our hearts, that those who are weakened by sickness or infirmity may be assured of love and support by their families and loved ones. We pray, Lord, open our hearts, that eternal salvation may be granted to the faithful departed. We pray, Lord, open our hearts. In silence, we pray for our other intentions. We pray, Lord, open our hearts. Eternal Father, heal our selfishness. Take away our blindness so that our hearts can receive the good news of salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to me and drink. 
Come to me and drink, O let all who are thirsty, come to me and drink. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and know that I am the to me and drink, come to me and drink, O oh, let all who are thirsty, come to me and drink, I will pour my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come to me and drink, come to me and drink, O oh, let all who are thirsty, come to me and drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word in holy scriptures, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation to Christ our Lord. Amen. We will pray special prayer, Eucharistic prayer number one for reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. That we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. You never turned away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, we committed grievous sins, you have bound the human family to yourself, to Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with the new bond of love so tight it can never be undone. Even now, you set before us, your people, a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love in proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings. Pour out on them 
power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son Jesus Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters though we once we lost could not approach you because of our sins you loved us with the greatest love for your son who alone is just handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, Jesus took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood that would be shed on the cross, Jesus took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, Father. He handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. Looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you for our, our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the entire human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those who unite to yourself with the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake with this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart in your church, together with Francis of Pope, Onesto of Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, kingdom of peace and justice, until the hour when we stand before you saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed virgin mary mother of god health of the sick with saint joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy then free at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation we shall sing to you with gladness thanksgiving of christ who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
Let's pray with confidence, our Father in heaven, and ask that we for, for be, be forgiven of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us in the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ. Peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Divine Word became a human being and died a horrible death on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. Happy are those who accept this invitation to eat at his table. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sino kayang ulo? 
Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, steer up the hearts of your faithful so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting. To Christ our Lord. Amen. to the sacred heart praise to the sacred heart who wrought our salvation praise to the sacred heart who wrought our salvation we praise you lord jesus christ because we know the love you have for us we thank you for your word which reveals to us the love of your heart we thank you for this source of grace which streams forth to eternal life. We praise you, open heart of Jesus. Through you we have access to the Father. We praise you because you loved your own who were in the world to the very end. We praise you for your love that is stronger than death. We thank you for setting the earth on fire. Praise to the sacred heart who wrought our salvation. Praise and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. Short reading. Many people followed him, and he cured them all, but he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I delight, I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. 
A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. Jesus, full of love, had mercy on the people, all who were despised by others, all who were in need, found understanding and refuge with him. He gave food to the hungry. He brought the good news to the poor. He invited those who were tired from carrying their heavy loads and gave them rest. The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, those who hope in his steadfast love. That he may deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lord Jesus Christ, rich as you were, you made yourself poor for our sake, in order to make us rich by means of your poverty. We thank you for your love you showed us. Help us to love, help one another as members of your body, that we may not get tired of doing good. Open our eyes to the needs of others. Open our hands that we may share with others what we have. Jesus, full of mercy for your people, form our hearts according to your heart. In the silence of our hearts, we present to the compassionate heart of Jesus our needs, prayers, and intentions. May the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief vanish before the light of the word and the spirit of grace. And may the heart of Jesus live in the hearts of all. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other See us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, 
but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Reynadimets, pray for us. Given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all sweetness. Let us pray, O God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may ever feel within us the fruit of your redemption. You live and rule. World without end. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. 
Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. be seated for an announcement. The link for Mass Intentions has been changed due to some technical issues. Please visit the new link bit.ly slash shrine mass intentions and fill out the form and submit your intentions. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mass and benediction have been celebrated. Let us go in the peace of Christ, the divine word. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, blessed. 